Okay, Shab testing, testing. Okay, good. All right, uh, Shabir, I've got two questions for you. One, just to get the nerves out, and the second one's going to be a bit important. Uh, first, do you know a YouTuber named by the name of Secular Talk, uh, Kyle Kalinske? Uh, no, I, I don't actually. He was on Joe Rogan's uh, podcast, and I think it would be interesting if you two debated each other. Okay, once. I'll take a look. Okay, thanks. All right, and then the second one. The second one's a bit critical. Shapiro, you've shown disdain for the people who have called you and a lot of your remarks bigoted, and you make it one of your hallmarks, right? Like, if someone calls you a sexist, racist, bigot, homophobe, you can't take that. You have to, like, fight back and fight back, like, immediately. Yet, you call these claims against you preposterous, but yet considering the fact that, A, while you were an editor-at-large at Breitbart, they called people like Bill Crystal a renegade Jew. Also, they... That was after I left, actually, but... What did you say? That was after I left. Hmm? Okay. And also, touting... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. That's okay. no, fine. Also counting people as, uh, also counting Jewish leaders as neocons, something that you yourself have said is an anti-Semitic slur. Also, when you resigned, you just saw the infamous poster that they put on you. They put, like, your face into, like, the David Star. Also, you initially defended a video of your own creation, that, well, not of your own creation. It was not of my creation, yeah. The, the Daily Columbus Wire. Day video, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. The Daily Wires, you defended that initially that video where you defended, or you defended that as satire, of course, the infamous video of people, of Native American people, their genocide. Yeah, the video's just, garbage. Justified. Right. And then finally, and most infamously, you said that Arabs, not Islam, were, quote, your words, were the darkness in the Middle East, were rotten to the core. And most infamously and horribly, you said Arabs like to bomb crap and live in open sewage. Okay, yes. so I can, I, can I address those one at a time? Okay, so let's, uh, let's go through them one by one. So, um, as, so let's start with the, the last one, the bomb crap and, and live in open sewage. Go back and look at the entire Twitter thread. I was specifically talking about the leadership of Hamas. I actually say that in the thread, like in the next tweet. So I don't believe that all Arabs like to live in, in open sewage and bomb crap, obviously. I think there are millions of Arabs, I actually say in that thread, in that exact same thread, that there are millions of Arabs across the Middle East who are wonderful people, and there are, wonder, there are many millions of Muslims who are wonderful people. So, you know, again, that one's out of context. As far as the Columbus Day video, what happened is that I was on vacation, and I got news that this thing had broken. And I looked at it, and it looked to me like a bad video, but a satire video. And I'm always hesitant to pull down satire, just as a general rule, because I think that once you start pulling down satire, then you are opening yourself up to the charge that anything that is intended to be humorous is, is supposed to be taken at face value. So my initial response was very torn. And over the course of the next 24 hours, the more I looked at it, the more I thought it was garbage, and the more I thought that the, the comedic value of it was dramatically outweighed by the nastiness of it. And I took the hit myself, and I took it down. Right, so, there, so there's that. Uh, as far as the column where I talked about uh, you know, darkness in the Middle East, what I specifically was talking about, again, that's taken out of context, is about a column. It was a column with regard to the Palestinian Authority and the fact that if you were to juxtapose Israeli settlements to the Palestinian Authority, then what you would be looking at is a regime that is terroristic and supports terror attacks and supports tyranny and supports the, the imprisonment of gay people and, and does not support women's rights. And you're looking on the other side at a regime and at a, at a state that supports all of the same values that we in the West value. So, uh, the, so I think it's important that we actually give full context to each of those remarks. Um, again, what, the reason that I fight back on the racist, homophobe, bigot charge is because if you're going to call me that without evidence, then you're a jackass. And if you're going to take my stuff out... <laughs> And taking, and taking context uh, is, and I'm not suggesting this is what you're doing, my guess is that you're probably getting this off a list that was provided by some group or another. Um, but if that's, if that's the case, then pulling quotes out of context and then using these as bludgeons without actually looking at what I was saying is a cheap trick. So what is your formal education background? Uh, I guess uh, a lot of people don't know what your undergraduate degree is in. Uh, so I was at uh, UCLA in political science and then uh, Harvard Law School. Okay. Uh, so you don't have, uh, you wouldn't consider yourself an expert in sociology? I, I mean, I, I don't consider sociology a particularly expert field, but go ahead. <laughs> I think I'm able to read a sociological study. So you're not necessarily yes, there are, lots, there are lots of fields of study. Right. Well, what I'm getting at is there's a lot of topics. Let's put it this way. I know a lot less about welding than I do about sociology. <laughs> um, what I'm getting at is that you're not considered an expert in sociology, psychology, 
uh, gender studies, lesbian dance theory, uh, many of these things that you've brought up tonight. Uh, I know a lot more about all those others than lesbian dance theory. As far as, if you want to take issue with the argument, I would urge you not to use the argument from authority, which is somebody has a PhD by their name, they know what they're talking about. That's a dumb argument. Uh, what I'm trying to get at is that the fact that if you have any other further education on any of these topics or any of these fields of study. I don't need, to, I don't need a, a seven-year degree in sociology to no bullshit when I hear it. And granted, that's your opinion. Uh, right. Because I'm here, yeah, giving it. <laughs> that would mean that uh, they're also offering kind of an unqualified opinion on a lot of these topics. See, again, you're just making the argument from authority. I don't think slapping a PhD from Ferris State next to your name makes you an expert in all things in the field in which you propose to speak. Okay, the fact is that either my argument's good or my argument's bad. Citing to my credentials is a really bad way of making an argument. It's, like the, it's actually the equivalent of, it's so funny, when people do this, it's the equivalent of actually a religious person saying, citing to the Bible for an argument. I'm a very religious person, right? I mean, see this? It's the yarmulke, okay? I'm a religious person, okay? I never cite to the Bible. The reason I don't cite to the Bible is because that's an argument from authority. Okay, you may not believe the authority to which I'm citing. I don't believe the authority to which you're citing. So you're going to have to make me an argument as to what I'm saying that's wrong instead of just saying I don't have the properly enumerated degree from the institution of your choice. I'm merely citing academia. Uh, if you haven't done any significant study or any type of educational, uh, you haven't you know, established yourself as a PhD or a doctor in any of these programs, so how can you make a, a qualified opinion on any of these topics is my question because I have read the studies and I can have an opinion on them. And that's your opinion and mine was just stated, so thank you. Yes, that was my opinion. That's... What happened? I especially want to thank the law enforcement officers for doing what they had to do to ensure that this event could take place in safety and security. Law enforcement is wildly underappreciated, and everything they do is done to make us safe. I'd also like to give a special thanks to Fred Allen for making this event possible. He sponsors events like these across college campuses, and Mr. Allen has proven himself to be a great advocate for free speech in America's founding principle. I do have a lot of warmth, I should say, for USC. I have a bunch of family members who are USC grads. My sister went here. Two of my sisters-in-law actually went to grad school here. I have a bunch of friends who went here. And while this is the inferior school in town. <laughs>